Hello there everybody and welcome to episode 4 of this series called The Class of 2017. What it is, if you haven't seen any of the first three episodes, is I have put a number of high quality players into the Wolves Academy with a minus 10 potential ability, which means that the potential ability will range anywhere between 170 and 200. As you can see here, our highest potential ability is the player called Flash Plays with a potential ability of 199. However, you can see that as we've simmed forward the game, he has not been able to reach that pot that potential ability yet, whereas somebody like Michael McIntyre is very, very close to doing that. So let's have a, look, a deeper look at some of the players. As we started the save with Wolves, we'll have a look at who's left at Wolves first. So we've got Just Mike, Troy Thomas Lennyhan, Ed Haig Saunders and Scotty DeWolf. Scotty DeWolf now in 11 seasons has only played 93 games. So let's have a look how Wolves have gone first. First of all the captain of Wolves is one of our players Troy Thomas Lennyhan and Scotty DeWolf is the vice captain. The key player as well is Troy Thomas Lennyhan so well done to him. However Wolves having had a few seasons in the Premier League have been relegated finishing 19th so we're back into the Championship and it's no real surprise having that big crop of players have all left at the same time or you know very quick succession. So the only players now involved are those and three of them making you know playing regularly. Let's have a look at the best 11 for this season. Uh, Lenny Han actually playing as a striker because if you remember correctly I he started his career as a centre back uh, if we just skip back a few seasons there you can see even last season he was a centre back so maybe it was that change that has caused Wolves to get relegated but he's been playing on his own up front scoring 13 goals which for somebody who did he score the season before well 15 goals from defence <laughs> so pretty good from Troy Thomas, well done. Uh, just Mike playing in that holding midfield role there, and Ed Haig Saunders, Saunders, of course, in goal. No sign of Scotty DeWolf in here either, uh, so that's a shame for him. But you'll notice that Cameron Borthwick Jackson has come back to the club and played every game at left back as well, but not good enough to keep them from being relegated. Now the overall 11 is an interesting read, we've still got Jack Rashbrook here who managed to play 168 games for the Wolves at an average rate of 6.6 .6, so that's pretty good. Albert Oswald as well who's now moved to Tottenham but played 130 times for Wolves there. Helder Costa out of interest 275 appearances there for a right midfield. Uh, Ed Haig Saunders who's still at the club at 257 appearances. Uh, they are the key players. So Rashbrook, Oswald, Lennyhan and Saunders. Any players on the bench there? Daniel Derman, 121 appearances, 34 goals. And then Keepers, 113 appearances, 49 goals. So those two went for big money moves to Man City. Now let's have a look at some of the other players then. So all, no, three of the four players who are still at the Wolves are wanted by other clubs. Just Mike is wanted for big money by Tottenham, Man United and West Ham. There is some minor interest from uh, Liverpool as well. But with a big price tag like that, you'd expect him to go. Well, he's got a minimum release fee clause there of 53 million. So Wolves still have income from selling these players if they do decide to. Uh, Scotty DeWolf as well is wanted by Brighton. Are they in the? They're in the Premier League, so I don't know how he's managing to get moves like that when he's not playing. So Troy Thomas Lennyham as well, he, despite being the Wolves captain, is also up for. There's a chance that he could be sold as well. Leicester and Stoke are looking at him, so he'll be staying local to the club. Now some of the other players then who've gone elsewhere. Let's have a look at them. Josh Williams. Some great stats there, it's pace 18, acceleration 17, that on the wing would be absolutely frightening. Dribbling 15, crossing 16, he'd be fantastic to play with. 
Let's have a look how he's been impacting Arsenal. Playing a little bit more now. 23, 14 starts. Slightly more than the year before. But bear in mind these players now are 26, so they should be making more consistent impact. Jack Rashbrook at Chelsea. I do apologise, Jack, for that. Although he spent most of last season out on loan to Stoke. So 22 appearances there for Stoke and a goal for him. But he's back to Chelsea now. Well, I wonder whether he's in the under-23, so maybe. I mean, he's quite a career-driven person, and he's done well for a uh, Premier League team in the past, so maybe he'll consider moving elsewhere. Owen Cowton at Crystal Palace in goal. Didn't play last season, but he's sort of cemented himself as a number two goalkeeper at the moment. He's been at Wolves for a long time in that role. And then he's moved to Crystal Palace and appears to be doing the same thing. He made three appearances in the Cup, but not in the league. Not a single one in the league. Michael Bibb, who's wanted by somebody. He's wanted by West Ham. He's at Huddersfield at the moment, who on the game have been flitting in between the Premier League and the Championship. Although they finished mid-table in the Championship last year with Mike Williamson as their manager. But Michael Bibb is their key player, so well done to him. Let's have a deeper look at some of his stats. Uh, 3.2 million he moved for, 44 appearances in the championship last season, so again, making more of an impact, and 6.54 rating, which is improving, that's his best season I believe, so good for him, let's have a look at some of his stats, for a full back marking, tackling, pretty good, anything over 15 in the championship is very, very good, so he's quite quick as well, which is good for a full back, and 77 appearances now for Huddersfield, compared to his 27 or 31 for Wolves. So good. Liam Eduardo Gregorini is now at Leicester. He spent a season down in the... Oh, he didn't go down to the Championship. He, he was relegated with Huddersfield, uh, but as soon as they were relegated, we had a look at his uh, page, and he wanted to leave, so he managed to get a move to Leicester. Where did Leicester finish in the league? 13th. And he played quite a few games there, 25 of the 38 games, and 6.47 rating is fairly good. Gully Kula still at Liverpool. He's becoming one of the top players, top defenders certainly, on the game for us. 29 appearances with a goal last season with his average ratings. Surely got to be one of the best, and one of the most consistent over his whole career. His average rating is 6.93, but last season was his best season. Again, six, sorry, 7.26 with five player of the matches. So he is turning into an incredible centre-back. 17 for heading, 18 for marking, 17 for tackling, 18 for strength. His pace is 15 as well, so they are a 19 level posi positioning. Absolutely superb stats. 131 appearances for Liverpool. 235 appearances overall in his career, so superb stuff from Gully. Uh, we're going to skip past keepers because he's just an exceptional player. He's so close to his potential now. Or did he reach his potential in the last episode? I can't remember. And is he starting to come down? Strikers seem to make you know reach their potential around about this age in their late twenties. So he and he's worth 61 million. So. Not going to talk about him too much, but we are going to have a look at Dan Derman, who's still in the Man City under-23s, which is very disappointing. Only nine appearances for Man City last year, all from the bench, one league goal. Surely, surely he's got to be moving on now. That's five seasons, is it, Man City that he's had? And they've paid £65 million for him, mind, for nine starts, 18 starts, 18 league appearances. And, in fact only one start in those four years so that's pretty dreadful uh, and a pretty expensive mistake for Man City but is he actually that bad let's have a look dribbling and finishing are quite good heading long shots technique fairly good but they're not 65 million pounds worth are they I don't think anyway you when you're paying 65 million and a player for Man City you've got to have sort of 18 19 stats yeah, I expect him to move on pretty soon Matt Wayne, how's he been getting on at Man United? Good, fairly consistent. Slightly less starts this season. Maybe they've signed somebody else there. We'll have a look at his stats. 
later on. Dave has a party who's at Man United, but he's wanted by West Ham. He's got slightly. He's got good stats for a left-sided player as well. Crossing, dribbling, first touch, uh, pace as well. He's quite good. So he's a pretty good winger, pretty solid winger. Has he been affecting the play though? No, that's the thing. Once they've had these big money moves to big clubs, they've never managed, except for keepers and gully, they've never managed to hold down a place in the teams, which has been a shame, really. Now I've gone to Newcastle. Is that a new move? Uh, yes, I think it must have been. But again, only four appearances, three starts. So we're not going to spend too long looking at that. Sam Jordan spending time at Stoke again he's been quite a successful story of this uh, save for striker they're excellent stats for the Premier League 17 for finishing 16 for dribbling first touch and heading passing not brilliant but I suppose he's been passed to most of the time rather than creating stuff his pace could be a little bit better as well 15 but with his acceleration 17 he'll be able to get out of trouble Albert Oswald he's my sort of player centre mid defensive mid with these stats and long shots as well 16 has he managed to grab many goals no only a couple of us Spurs but he's playing regularly as well he's a good player by the looks of those stats too I know I'm skipping through some of these players quite quickly but if you want to pause the screen or I'm going to try I wasn't able to put the um, files up for the last episode but I'll try again for this one and see what happens Michael McIntyre again fantastic dribbling finishing the first touch stats and that's why he's valued at 54 million his pace is fairly good as well his agility is excellent um, passing technique superb so he has been one of the most consistent players and because of playing for England as well I think that sort of bumps his value up a little bit and then finally Newton Durham Australian player he has been playing for West Ham for a while and I think he's one of the only players who there is no transfer fee for except for the ones who are obviously still at Wolves Newton Durham was released for free after three years in the academy and then went to West Ham he's been on loan a couple of times but he's played at West Ham and he's starting to well 32 starts last season compared to three the season before two the season before that five the season before that so he's starting to get a foot in the door again maybe maybe somebody's left or somebody's injured something like that affects that so I think we've covered everything on there so Wolves still got Shane Long in charge he came in at Christmas time and was relegated. So Wolves down in the Championship. Will any of these players stay? Are any of the four that remain? Are they going to stay? Find out in just a second. He's going to be season 12. So here we are at season 12. At the age of 27 now, there is only one player remaining at Wolverhampton Wanderers. And that is Ed Haig Saunders. He's played 319 times for Wolves now. 51 caps. He's nearly reached his potential ability. And don't forget, goalkeepers as well tend to reach their potential ability near the end of their careers. And he could end up playing as well for a long, long time because goalkeepers do go on until they're almost 40 in this game. So we'll see how that goes there. Now let's have a look at the current ability and see who's near the top or who has reached their potential. Michael McIntyre, only one point away now from achieving that. He's now on 399 all-time appearances with 192 goals. 49 caps for England as well with 38 goals. is an exceptional record, so he's got a chance of even beating uh, Wayne Rooney's record of 50. And I imagine at the age of 27 that he will, no doubt. Keepers as well, who's been playing for Scotland has made 94 caps with 69 international goals, which is just unbelievable. And he has now reached his potential ability. So we'll start to see him slipping down a little bit. Although he scored 211 goals and in 453 appearances, we might now see him dropping a little bit and maybe falling down the pecking order at Man City. Not quite sure if that'll happen, but he's still valued at 61 million. Still scoring goals consistently. 
He had that one massive season a few years ago, but he's still his average ratings are excellent. He's at his whole career is averaging at seven point one, which is fantastic. But constantly, you know, seven point one nine, seven point three, seven point five two, very very good stats for him. I wonder whether I'm just gonna have a quick look whether it's helped Scotland to get to any competitions recently. Uh, so they finished runners up in the international European International League, which I'm not sure what that is or what that entails so no they still haven't qualified for a world cup they did qualify for the european championships in 2020 and 2028 but failure to get out of the groups both times so we're not i'm not i'm not quite sure how that tournament is going to work i know that it's going to happen soon but david moy's in charge of them so yeah gully kular as well has been has reached his potential ability at the age of 27 so he's sort of in his peak for club he's going to be the first I imagine to get to 100 international caps as well he's on 98 he scored 11 goals for India I wonder if they've managed to do anything on the third place at the Asian Nations Cup uh, anything else that stands out there third place oh he wouldn't have been oh, wouldn't, no he wouldn't have been oh he would have been involved in that 2018 under 19s Asian Cup. Uh, South Asian Football Federation Championships, they've won quite a few times since Gully's been involved, so 2019, 25 and 27. But have they got to any World Cups? Mm, that didn't look like it. Olympics? No. But he's their top player. I imagine he's well. I don't know whether you can check. But I imagine he's the captain. We've talked about Ed Hague Saunders. Now let's have a look. As this is a Wolves-based save, let's just quickly check up on how they've done. And they've won the championship. Shane Long, they stuck with him. Ed Hang Saunders is the key player, but everybody else has gone. So Antonio Carlos and Trent Alexander Arnold, who is a current Liverpool player, has helped Wolves get promoted to the Premier League. Now, what I've been thinking about is whether some of these players might go back to Wolves near the end of their career. Once they've been everywhere and done everything, whether they might think about coming back. In terms of their current ability, been through them. Thomas Lennyhan as well went to Liverpool in the end to join Gully Kular and he played quite a lot, 33 appearances. I wonder where he played. He didn't score any goals so which suggests that maybe he was playing alongside Gully. Let's just check their senior squad. Yeah it looks like he was playing at right back which you haven't seen. He's been playing at centre back most of the time and he might spot down here as well. Michael Bibb has got his big move. He went from Huddersfield in the Championship to Liverpool last season only making two starts there but yeah so well done to him eight million pounds as well so a total of 11.82 million pounds over the series look if there's any other major moves Owen Cowden was at Crystal Palace before has he played for them this time he has he's played 24 times so maybe he's going to get a crack as well this season um, I don't think he's He's only got one international cap, obviously being behind Ed Haig Saunders, who's been the main man for for them. Josh Williams still at Arsenal, 21 goals, valued at £31 million, so 20 appearances for him. So that's going down slightly, a bit concerning there. Jack Rashbrook has joined his old mate Tom Rouse at Newcastle. He went for £13.25 million. Ah, right, so he didn't play at all for Chelsea. I imagine that was Jack uh, digging his heels in, refusing to play for the Chels. Uh, so he didn't make a league appearance last season at all. He's gone to Newcastle, who's probably ranked slightly lower, although finishing seventh last year, and he's their key player as well. With his old mate, maybe that's why me and Jack are both there, because of Cloud McAlealy. So let's see if I made any sort of impact. Nope. <laughs> I've been dire. It's been a little bit embarrassing. Dan Derman, still at Man City, still in the under 23s, still didn't make a start last season at all. Two starts in the cup, two goals, but oh dear oh dear. Dear oh dear oh dear. Flash plays who had the highest potential ability at Tottenham now, but not playing. I don't know what it is about some of these players. Maybe they don't have the right attitude, but he couldn't even get in the team at Wolves consistently flash plays. So looking at his stats as well, they're quite good. Crossing, dribbling, first touch. But you know, they could be in a team 
who've already got somebody of top quality in that position they just struggle to break in to the team so Scotty DeWolf as well you will also notice has gone to Stoke he <laughs> is that his best season? I think it is 6.57 with 8 starts in the Premier League helping Stoke to a ninth place finish not in any of the key players there Jack Butland still playing how old is he? 35 so yeah Scotty DeWolf hasn't been great but they're good stats as well heading marking tackling jumping valued at 9.5 still no caps for Holland yeah unfortunate unfortunate Liam Gregorini as well is wanted by somebody let's have a look who wants him Barcelona so we could see our first major European transfer with him if it comes off but he must be enjoying as well playing a little bit more for Leicester okay so what I'm going to do now is skip forward to the end of the next season and I've lost track of it almost I think it's season 13 it will be the end of so they'll be 28 coming up to their 30th birthday now and maybe see if Liam Eduardo Gregorini has got that big move to Barcelona. Here we are at the start of season 13 and around about halfway through the video so if you're enjoying why don't you press that like button or if you're really enjoying and you want to see more football manager videos from me then click subscribe. If I can manage to get up to 20 likes on this video then I'm going to start playing a uh, let's play series with as Wolves. I started to save with them but I'm not thinking about putting it, on, putting it on YouTube at the moment. But if I do get 20 likes on this video, then I will. Right, so, a few more changes, I believe. Josh Williams, we're going to start with today. He's joined Keepers and Dan Derman, who is still at Man City, but he's wanted by somebody. Espanyol. His value has gone from 65 million down to 9, and they're asking for 4.5 for him. They're just desperate to get rid of him. He's been on loan to Southampton last season, but I mean the potential that he had and what he was doing at Wolves, you'd have thought when he went to Man City he was going to tear it up, but maybe he was a little bit too young going there, and that's cost him. But Josh Williams has gone to Man City. Has he played for Man City? He has. Uh, 13 and a quarter million he went there for, and he's played 13 times, 13 starts, nine substitute appearances with five goals. Sorry, five assists three goals so Josh Williams I'll tell you what I'm not going to go through all this now but what I will do is at the end of the series I'm going to do a breakdown of each player read their bi biographies and stuff but I'm going to put them up as unlisted videos because I don't think anybody wants me to nobody's going to sit and watch a video that's an hour long about Josh Williams are they so we'll see we'll see what I'll do about that but yeah great stats for him 69 caps for Wales. Let's just check if Wales have done anything uh, in the tournaments. You can see that Josh Williams is one of the top ranked players for them. Uh, now, have they managed to reach any competitions? They haven't. Uh, they came. They managed to get to the 2022 World Cup, which Josh and maybe myself, the worst players in the squad, would have been involved in, but they finished bottom of the group. European Championships, they've done quite well. And qualifying for that, they got to the quarter final looking 2020, quarter final in 2024, and then third in the group in 2028. Just Mike at Man United now, he's moved from Tottenham last season 23 and a half million, played 20 times for them, only one start though, 19 off the bench. He was another one who had massive potential but has never really achieved that. He's got 107 caps for Gibraltar and seven goals which is quite good but he's some way off his potential ability which is a great shame Dave has a party still there at Man United and he's reached his 100 caps for Malta so that's fantastic and at the age of 28 that is that is something to be applauded although didn't play much for Manchester United last year only five appearances from the bench was loaned out to uh, Atletico Madrid in Spain so the first player that we've seen who's gone to a top top uh, foreign club we've seen a few go to Stade Rene and uh, uh, there was an Austrian one wasn't there Salzburg was there 
so he's made 12 appearances for Atletico Madrid, four appearances in the Champions League as well, assuming that they were in the Champions League. And now he's back at Manchester United and probably looking to go elsewhere because he's seems to be surplus to requirements there. Ed Hague Saunders has finally left the Wolves. He went to Stoke for 8.5 million and played almost every game there too. 35 appearances, conceding 40, which is not great, but 12 international caps. He must be doing very well. 61 caps yet yeah, at the age of 28. Could well get 100 caps for England, which would be fantastic for him. He doesn't seem to like wearing the number one shirt. I, don't, I think he was always number 13 at Wolves and now he's number 23 at Stoke as well. Flash plays at S Tottenham now. Still not going to reach that potential ability because of his lack of game time. Albert Oswald doing very well but some way off his potential ability as well with 167 for 183. Michael McIntyre still one point away from that potential. But he scored 44 goals now for England, 57 caps, and 147 league goals for Wolves and Tottenham. 16 goals last season, 25 in all competitions, seven international goals. So he's he's certainly one of the top strikers alongside Sam Jordan and keepers. Who's the other one? So yes, uh, Newton Durham has found another club. He's gone to Middlesbrough, this time for a fee, so his first fee that has been paid for him. And he played 11 times for Middlesbrough this time. I'm now at Huddersfield. Do we talk about me? Oh, I've played 20 matches. Starting 19 and coming off the bench for one. Even got two player of the matches, look. That's my best season by a long way. Did Huddersfield get promoted? Did they? No. Anybody else I need to mention? Scotty Dwarf. You can see how there's a few players who've sort of. There's only a few clubs involved. You know, there's two players who play for Leicester together. Michael Bibb. Oh, sorry, Michael Bibb has just moved in. So he, he played one whole season for Liverpool. That must have been in the August transfer window, was it? Let's have, oh, no, January transfer window. So he lasted a while. And then he's gone. Still 7.75 million. It's quite a decent fee for somebody. Liam Gregorini, though, didn't get his move to Barcelona that we all hoped that he would. But he's become a consistent performer for Leicester and again improving. I think that's his best season. No, he had a good season for Wolves down here as well. So, and 69 caps for Malawi. I would have hoped that he had more than that. Um, he's their top player alongside Godfrey Cagliati. So good for him. Time to skip forward then to season 14 and we'll see how the players are getting on then. So we start this season with one of our players without a club and that's Dan Derman. He is a free agent with some interest from Brighton, Celtic, Watford and then some minor interest from Huddersfield. Is that New York City Football Club? It is. And our own Wolverhampton Wanderers. So I've got my fingers crossed. I hope that he goes back to Wolves but I don't imagine that it will happen. He had a loan deal there, loan spell at Championship Norwich and did very, very well. His best season, in fact, of his career. It's a shame for him, but he was not able to meet the expectation at Manchester City and he's wasted between 2022 and now 2030. He hasn't played, I think he, we worked out that he played one league game or something like that for Man City. It's ridiculous. He's still getting caps for Wales though, so that's... That's great. Just Mike at Manchester United. He's been there now for a few years, but his performances are slipping a little bit as well. Keepers, though, still, he's beaten Steve Bull's Lee. And oh, this is all time, isn't it? Sorry. 268 is closing in on Steve Bull's record of 306. Michael McIntyre, likewise, 240 with 48. So he little, slowed down a little bit this year. And still one point away from his. One point away from his potential ability. Sam Jordan now has made 400 all-time appearances with 158 goals. Two caps for England now. Uh, Troy Thomas, Lenny Ham still at Liverpool. 102 caps for Ireland as well. 24 goals. So fantastic. And he's becoming a mainstay in the Liverpool team now. He's played three seasons and played quite a lot of games in those times for him, for them. So that's quite good. Dave has a party still at Manchester United. Flash plays now has gone to Newcastle. Is that a new development? It is. 10 
times he's played for Newcastle. Uh, I wonder if Jack Rashbrook is still there. He is. Who was the manager there that signed both of them? Uh, it was um, Claude McAlealy, wasn't it? So Jack Rashbrook is enjoying himself there. I wonder if they have pushed Newcastle further up the league. No. Uh, Tom Rouse did at Huddersfield. Scotty DeWolf now at Burnley. We'll see if Burnley is. He's always playing in the Premier League. Scotty DeWolf. He's coming out of his shell a bit now. 34 appearances, 33 starts. And his best season so far. So well done, Scott. You finally got in the game. Has he made any international caps? He has. Look what happens when you play games, Scott. Still miles off his potential ability. So unless he plays a lot of games in the next couple of years, there's no way that he's going to reach that. Owen Cowden as well. Looks like he's played a bit more for uh, Crystal Palace again. Three seasons in a row where he's played games. A, lot, a bit fewer this time, but still, nonetheless, making an impact there. Liam Eduardo, Eduardo Gregorini still at Leicester. Ed Hank Saunders still at Stoke. Played every game last season, conceded one a game, so that's pretty, pretty good. Six man of the matches in the last two seasons as well for a goalkeeper, that's pretty exceptional. Gully Kular, you know what to expect from him now. He's reached his potential, worth 38 million. Still at Liverpool. Right, Newton Durham at, New, at Middlesbrough. He's been, uh, it's one of his best seasons as well for a long time, 6.82. He's had a couple of 6.84, 6.82, 6.86, 6.94. So he's been a quite a consistent performer as well over his career. So well done to him. Uh, Michael Bibb at Leicester. 23 caps for Ireland now. Not many compared to the other Irish, Irish player that we've got. But he's started to play a little bit more as well after not playing that much in his first season for Leicester. He's now played a little bit more. Matt Wayne has left Manchester United and he's gone to, to all the Lancashire club, Burnley. 12 and 3 quarter million price tag for him, only playing two times last season. Uh, so hopefully he'll get a few more games there. So he's playing alongside, who's the other Burnley player? Scotty DeWolf. So they'll be making up that back four there, or half of that back four at the very least. So Just Mike has made the most international caps for Gibraltar. He hasn't helped them improve their rating though, he's still 191st in the league, but he's their most important player, he's the top player. Ooh, they won the international European International League Group 3. What does that entail? I imagine it's this, is it? Oh, so they managed to get some wins against Kazakhstan, Lithuania and Moldova. To me, this international league looks absolutely dreadful. I think you end up playing the same three teams over a two-year period or something like that, over and over again. It just sounds like absolute, absolute hell. So, we're about to skip forward to the next season. Their last season in their 20s, they, they're, gonna, they'll all be turning 30 at the end of this season now. Maybe we'll see some of these current abilities dropping away from the potential abilities. Uh, those of the, those players who have got very, very close to them, like Michael McIntyre and uh, keepers who actually made it there. Oh, sorry, and Gully Kular as well. He reached his potential, didn't he? And sorry, Ed Haig Saunders, 172. But the some players are miles off, like. I'm the worst one, 128 current ability, 189 potential. Newton Durham, 137, 173. Dan Derman, but it's quite a. If he was a real person, it'd be tragic, but he just didn't play enough games for Manchester City. You look at uh, keepers who signed at roughly the same time or a season before, a couple of seasons before, has now played 550 games to Dan Derman's 273. So, pretty disappointing for him. But he's got a chance now, just as he's going into his 30s, to go and join a good club. Maybe down in the championship or something. He's still an excellent player. I mean, if Wolves can get... But the thing is, he's coming with this massive uh, wage expectation as well. But he won't be able to have that. We're going to go now and check out season 15. So these players now have been... That have been playing football for as long as they've been alive at the start of the series. And here they are, all of our little boys at the age of 30. They're now 
coming down from their peaks, I imagine lots of them. But some of the defenders and goalkeepers might be starting to reach their peaks now, so it'd be interesting to see if anybody's changed uh, stats now. We'll see. So we're going to start off with Newton Durham, who has left his club. He's now looking for a club. He only made one cap for Australia, and I doubt he'll make another one. But he's... He I don't know what happens with him, but all the time, he seems to run his contract out and then leave. West Ham, he stayed up for quite a long time. But he was doing quite well at Middlesbrough by the look of it in the Premier League but only four starts in the last season and he is without a club now. So he'll be looking for one there but his c current ability compared to his potential ability, the gap there is huge. Now the player that we left on a cliffhanger was Daniel Derman. He didn't have a club at the end of the last episode. He's found one now in Watford. Oh, good. So he went, took a drop down to the championship, but he played 40 times. He scored 12 goals, 11 assists. So he's got back to that sort of level that we expected to see from him when he was playing for Wolves, playing for Barnsley, broke into the Wolves team, helped them get promoted, and he's done it again. That is an amazing season for him. 12 goals, 11 assists. Fantastic. And he's wearing the number 9 shirt as well. He probably did he take a massive hit in wages, forty four and a half thousand pounds per week. It's better than a kick in the face, isn't it? Be be interested to see now how he gets on in the Premier League in a slightly weaker team. Just Mike is at West Ham. Been there now having moved from Manchester United. So he's moved around quite a bit in this episode. He's moved from Tottenham to Manchester United to West Ham now. Uh, six appearances for them last season, four starts and two from the bench. Still good stats, passing, technique, first touch, a little bit slow, 14 pace. That's going to start happening now as they reach their 30s and things like this as well. Broken ankle could hamper him a little bit as well. Gulraj Kular still exceptional for Liverpool. He's, he's been at his... He's been at his potential ability now for a fair few seasons. Still playing for, for India. 117 caps now. Absolutely amazing. And the longevity of his career and the average ratings just keep on impressing as well. 7.21. I'm going to come. I know that people are probably now screaming at the screens saying that they want to find out what their players have won. And I think what I'll do is once. The whole season, the whole save is over. I'll go through each player individually and talk about which trophies they've won and which who was the most successful and maybe tot up and and because we can all clearly see who is the best player, who's the most valuable player here. But maybe there's been a player who's, for example, Gully, who's not been the best player in terms of current ability or potential ability, but because of playing for Liverpool for a long time. He could have picked up a lot of trophies. So we'll come, we'll see that at the end of the series. Jack Rashbrook there in flash play still at Newcastle. Jack Rashbrook now, a couple of seasons there. And he's doing really well. Let's have a look if he's made the um, best 11 for them. Of course he has. Of course he has. 144 appearances for Newcastle now. And that's the overall best 11. So it's only taken him a couple of years to do that. Let's have a look if he's still in the Wolves' best 11. Rushes. Yeah, he is. And Dan Derman is. Maybe that is just testament to how bad Wolves have been recently. Lennyham, Saunders, and Oswald in there as well. Uh, Wolves, I forgot to check up on them last season. They got relegated from the Premier League. So this episode has gone relegation. Promotion, relegation, promotion from third place, so they win in the playoffs, and then finish in 11th. So we leave this episode with Wolves back almost where we left off. <laughs> and they've got Ole Tobiasen in charge, manager. Don't know who he is. And then some regens as their main players. But what I want to see in the next episode maybe is some, some of our players going back to Wolves to end their careers. I think that would be lovely. Scotty Dwarf has been interesting to watch. Has he played this season? He has. 
He's found a team that wants to play him and that he wants to play for. Has he managed to get some more caps for Holland? He has. He's got another one, so he's averaging at one per year for the last two years. So that's brilliant. Liam Eduardo Gregorini is wanted again by another club. He's always wanted, but he's staying quite loyal to Leicester. But now a Chinese club is coming for him. Guangzhou, uh, rumoured to be interested in the player. And if they offer the right fee, I'd imagine he would leave. Uh, £96,000 per week he's on at Leicester for another year. So Leicester as well, it might be beneficial for them if they sold him. Or... I don't know whether he'd sign a new contract. How long has he been at Leicester for? Quite a while. He'd have signed a contract in that time as well. And he seems to have found a team who suit him. They finished seventh a couple of times. Dave Azapardi is the only player now who's still at Manchester United. Although he's been loaned out to uh, Crystal Palace for all of last season. And he went to Toulouse as well. I forgot to mention that. So that was the start of the 2029-30 season he went to Toulouse uh, for the whole season by the look of it and then came back to Manchester United was loaned out straight again to Crystal Palace so his contract must be running out soon now he's got another two years left on that contract so he's not going to be playing much for Manchester United I imagine he's in the under 23s which is not great for somebody you know in their 30s they want to be pushing on and I think lots of these players now Realising they're not going to reach their potential abilities, so they're going elsewhere and making the names for themselves. Keepers, still at Manchester City, still scoring goals, nearly 600 appearances now for him. 16 goals, he's been the winner of this series, no doubt. Absolutely no doubt about it. He's scored 212 league goals in 423 appearances, and for Manchester City as well, 25 million. In the current market, is an absolute bargain, so... Good for him. Josh Williams still playing for Man City and contributing as well somewhat. Six starts, 19 substitute appearances, three goals. Sam Jordan is wanted by somebody. Oh, no, oh dear. A heavy. West Bromwich Albion want him and his contract's coming to an end at the end of next season. 15 million. Are they in the Premier League? No, they're not. They've just been relegated for the Premier League. Whether it be a viable deal for Albion, I don't know. But he's been, well, actually, he's, he was consistent in that little period there. We sort of took our eyes off him, and he hasn't performed in recent seasons. So he's maybe one for the chop there at Stoke. But Ed Haig Saunders has been there as well. And he's played almost every game since he moved there from Wolves. So Ed Haig Saunders must have he stayed with Wolves when they got relegated, but then once they got promoted he went elsewhere. Look at that. Forty six appearances, twenty six goals conceded. That's unbelievable. Twenty four clean sheets. That's amazing. But not his best season. His best season was the next season for Stoke. So yeah, he's a top keeper and has he made hundred caps yet? Eighty two. So he's closing in on that for England. Yeah. But yeah, good to see Dan Derman at a club. And we hope that Newton Durham finds a club as well, but he's got people interested, so I'm sure that he will. Oh, look at these. Atalanta, Mets, Leeds, and Malaga. Right, so that's the end of episode four of this series of the class of, ni oh, class of 92, class of 2017. I hope you've been enjoying it. If you have been enjoying it, then why don't you drop me a like? And if you've managed to get this far in the series as well, then well done. Because it's been a long, long episodes. People t seem to have been enjoying them and watching them for quite a long time, so thank you for everybody who has been. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel as well. And as I said earlier in this episode, if I can get 20 likes on this video, then I will do a Let's Play series with Wolves for the rest of this season with Football Manager 2017. And I have already had one or two requests about ideas for Football Manager 2018, which I haven't even been thinking about yet, so... Thank you very much to all of you, and I hope to see you again in the next episode. It might be the last step. Well, no, I would imagine that it will be the last episode because there'll be 35 at the end of the next episode. So there might be two more episodes left. So thank you very much. I'll see you soon.